everybody. This is Sergio with the Ride Share Guy. Today, I'm joined by Craig from beautiful Washington State. He's in Vancouver, Washington. Hey, Craig, how are you? Great. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Um, you know, anytime I speak to a driver from uh, um, state of Washington, you know, I hang up cussing myself constantly <laughs> because you guys have, you have, let me tell you something. You guys have it good up there. Okay. But we're going to talk about that anyway. So, you know, you, give me an introduction of yourself. You know, what you've been doing, how long you've been in the gig economy, rideshare specifically, apps, trips, all kinds of good stuff. And what kind of car you drive? Um, Craig Bethel, I drive a red Nissan Leaf since 2018. And before that, I drove a Honda Civic. And I started with Lyft. And then... Uh, that was six and something years ago. And then when pandemic hit, there weren't any ride shares. I had to branch out because Lyft didn't have anything. So I started doing food delivery and I did six different food delivery companies. And I did that for three months, as long as I could stand or actually until par parking enforcement came back and started giving out tickets for double parking. Wow. And, and then I got a, a, a uh, plastic sheet between the front and back seats and started ride share again and was much happier. I just, yeah, for some for reason, food wasn't for me. Yeah. For everybody is different. You know, some people hate doing ride share. Some people hate doing food. So I like a, I like a hybrid of both because it kind of, you know, food doesn't throw up in your car. They don't talk back to you and all that good stuff. So I kind of like that part of it as well. But, uh, so um, we've spoken to uh, Seattle or Washington State drivers or Bellingham. You know, now you're in Vancouver, very close to uh, Oregon. Um, so, you know, uh, as a veteran, I'm going to call you a veteran because you've been in the gig for about six years, right? So right. you've seen the evolution of these apps, right? You've seen the good, the bad, and then now you're back to good. Now, good compared to the rest of the country, Okay. Because trust me when I say this, I know you're a viewer of ours and show me the money. You guys have it good up there. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, deny it. Are you denying that, that you guys have it good up there? No, we don't have to do the, um, what's that ride things you guys have to do down there? Oh, the quest? Hopper ride. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Upfront fares. And yeah. I don't want to see those. Those are, those would be the bad. Yeah. So, and uh, you guys don't have upfront fares. Lucky you, because upfront fares is no bargain. Okay, let me tell you. But you guys also don't see where you're going, though, right? I mean, you do to a point, but not the specifically the pickup address and the drop off address. No, right? so we with Lyft, I see both. Okay. With Uber, I don't see both. With Lyft, I see both. Um, after it's usually after I accept a ride and can stop, and then I can scroll up and see the pickup. Well, where I picked up and where I'm dropping off. That may be, but they also be, give me a map. Yeah, that may be the reason. The reason for that may be that that you're a platinum driver, right? And could be. Yeah, and and uh, I'm pretty sure it is. But what it is one of the perks, right? And also, being a platinum comes with six area filters, which I know I'm I'm hoping you like it <laughs> because I don't know any driver that complained about the area filters so far. But no, you know, they're great. the driver bunch is a complaining bunch, so I'm sure they always find something to complain about. Um, no, at 3.30 3 in the afternoon, I can put on an area filter and just cover Vancouver, and I never have to cross the bridges and then try to get back across. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, I, I know your situation, but I want you to tell us, like, I know you're retired, right? And, right. Um, I mean, how many hours a week do you drive? Do you, like, uh, full-time, part-time? What do you call yourself? Well, I don't know what full time part time. I drive about six hours a day. Okay. Yeah. Well, the, every day, or you take days off, or what? Um. Every once in a while, I'll take a day off. Okay. So you're 30, 40, 25 to forty hours. Yeah. Longer. Right. Okay. So when I told the you know the the audience and our viewers about the good, the bad, and now the good, right? The good has been around in the form of for you guys in the state of Washington in highest rates by by a mile uh in the country meaning um give us the rates uh where you're at in uh mile and minute rates since you guys don't have upfront fares and uh right. what is your rate card in vancouver it's a dollar 27 a mile and 37 cents 
One minute. Okay, so um, and and you do know obviously that you're pretty far from Seattle, but you do realize Seattle has higher rates, such as dollar yeah. fifty a mile and sixty four cents a minute, right? But that's okay. Yeah. I'm, so comparatively, uh, people, uh, when you're watching this, I am an LA driver for the last seven years. Um, the highest rates when I started in 2015 uh, that I saw was less than what Craig has in uh, in his city right now, right? So, so as far as rates, they have it good. What else you guys have up there? Um, as far as you know, uh, rideshare drivers, benefits, things like that. So, talk a little bit about that if you know anything about it. Well, for every forty hours of with a rider in the seat, yeah. We get um, an hour of paid sick time, which my rating is about $61 an hour. And when I've accrued four hours, then I can claim it. Without being sick? Well, I I, I, I have to go for <laughs> some outpatient, you know. I can be <laughs> sick of driving, can I? <laughs> <laughs> so $61 an hour. So that's an extra probably 250 bucks a month if you do. Yeah, right? well... Not quite a month because you have to do get the accrued rides. Okay, I got you. Okay, so and I started in I started in uh, January and I only have three. But I'm waiting for Lyft to give me my fourth. Okay, um, so your problems are quite different than ours. The rest oh, of the yeah. country, right? So I feel sorry I wanna, for you guys. I, I, you know, you've been a driver for six years. Okay, so I, I just want to get the feel from you. Obviously, you're a single driver that I'm talking to, but I've spoken to other Washington state drivers. And now um, I'm going to play the devil's advocate. And every single time that there is a rate hike or drivers ask for a livable rate, like such as yourself, right? Uber, Lyft complained that the world is going to come to an end, that, that demand is going to collapse, that you're going to lose your flexibility and freedom. And there's going to be much less people asking for a ride share. What do you think in your own situation, personal? Have you seen anything like that in the last year and a half? No, I've always said ever since I've been doing it, it's it's now it's just too ingrained in the system. And then with this uh, area preference, my riders really enjoy the fact that I'm in the area and I'm to them quicker than somebody driving across the bridges from Portland or yeah. from out, you know. They really appreciate being picked up quick. Have you seen oversaturation because of these high rates? Are the people poaching into Washington State from Oregon? Yeah, yeah. People in Vancouver don't. They don't have to worry about waiting for a ride because there's people coming up from Portland. Because even the Portland drivers who get seventy cents a mile and twenty four cents a minute, of course, they drive up to Vancouver, which I would do too, yeah. to get the higher rates. And so there's it's saturation, but there's rides out there. I mean, if I just go out and get rides, there's rides. So so even when, you know, people from Oregon come in and poach in your area to take advantage of the higher rates. Right. Because that's also what Uber says, you know, like there's going to be oversaturation. A lot of drivers say, well, yeah, everybody wants to drive for a dollar twenty seven a mile. Right. Um, yeah. But it, is it like that when you get out, there are no trips for you? No, you do your trips. Right. There is demand. Demand hasn't died. Mm -hmm. The longest, you know, they and Lyft actually puts down the, the time between rides. So you can go out when it's one or one to three minutes, or you can go out when it's seven to 13 minutes between rides. Right. And they're pretty accurate on that. Right. So, but, but what I'm trying to ask you is that you have not seen demand collapse. So you're still making oh, no. money, you're busy, right? No, I, I think the riders are much happier paying more. None of them have complained. They've noticed. Yeah. But they pay more for Uber. Yeah. Lyft is more popular here in Portland and up in Vancouver than Uber yeah. is, right? Yeah. Well, but what, what, you know, my point is that you have a model up there in the state of Washington that's, to me, from the outside, as an outsider, looks like a win 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 situation. Do you agree or disagree? I agree. Okay. So the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about is um, besides obviously higher rates, right? You have um, pretty close to about 80% of employee rights without being an employee you guys have health care now you guys yep. have paid time off you guys have sick leave as you just discussed and you guys have the highest rates now there's family time off too that they have uh, now. they just added that i guess yeah so my my question to you is um 
How do you feel about the rest of the country when you watch our show and <laughs> see drivers suffer? What do you think about us? <laughs> oh, I, I really feel for you guys. And I don't understand why the CEOs are saying that they're going to, you know, walk out because they're not. It's too ingrained in the system. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with you. So you said you have a Nissan Leaf. I don't think that thing gets more than 120 miles uh, for a charge, right? No, after the first year of bad charging, I I swapped the I had a 40 kW battery in there, which got me 150 miles. Okay. And then I swapped it out for another four thousand dollars, traded in that battery, swapped it out with a local place here, and got a 62 kW battery, which gives me 220 miles. Wow. So, do you know your cost per mile on that car? It's eighteen eighteen dollars a day to pay off my lease, and then. It's really hard to say the charging because I pay 25 bucks a month to one place and it's unlimited charging. Okay. And then I have a few secret places around here that have free chargers. Okay. So I I probably pay 15 cents. If I were to charge at home, and if I had 220 in the apartment, which they don't, yeah. it would only cost me $3.50 to get 220 miles. That's crazy. So you have, you're driving the right car, you have the highest rates. Um, the other thing that drivers would want to know from you is, you know, we are at the right chair guy and show me the money of the impression that if they had these rates, like if I had these, your rates, okay, I wouldn't decline a trip. What is your acceptance rate, by the way? Uh, it's about 99 to 100. So what, <laughs> so you don't see a reason to decline trips at those rates, correct? Oh, no, no. And, and the Especially with the area filter. Yeah, and the passenger is happy getting picked up right away because there's a bunch of drivers who are happy to drive for and accept. No, don't play the cancellation game, right? right? Passenger, don't wait. They get picked up right away. They're happy to pay a little bit more for the convenience, obviously. And you guys are making money. So the other thing is, and a lot of drivers ask me, is that, oh, yeah, because they have the higher rates, but they're not going to get these quests. They're not going to get surge. They're not going to get this. They're not going to get that. I'm Who going. Cares? Like, <laughs> I I rather not have any of that and get paid buck twenty seven a mile and thirty seven cents a minute. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with that picture. No, I I take those things as what they are is games, and we frankly don't get as many bonuses in Vancouver as they put in Portland. Right, but then their rates are half years. That's right. why they. No, no, no. Why, the rates, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, we, we don't want to play the game. This is a simple thing. Right. We pick up people point A, we drop people point B. This doesn't have to be this complicated. You know what I mean? Yeah. So but it's um, kind of fun to play the games. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah, I guess they like playing the game. So um, so you're not seeing a demand decline or a crush that these companies say. What do you say today? Is that BS, right? This just doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. And you haven't seen uh but and other people, you know, other people ask me the question. Or are they part of a union? Are you part of a union to get all these rights? Yes. Okay. We're part of Teamsters 117. What do you pay for that every month? Um, right now, it's $35 a month. Yeah. Which is what? Two, two rides? Two, yeah, two rides here. Yeah, 35 and a month. But what do you get for that 35? To... What do you get for the 35? Oh, well, you get the paid sick time. You get the family leave. You get, well, it's video, video medical. Yeah video medical and you get a, they're working in the legislation because they're right by olympia yeah so like they help put a bill through that would stop um autonomous driving in and Washington. how about how about unjust deactivations you guys have representation and they have you have lawyers that you can go to for accidents for deactivations and for any problem and they fight for you so you're not trying to fight against the the support or right non-support people <laughs> yeah, i know about support but um so the 35 bucks a month but i know you guys gave up the right to unionize as rideshare drivers though because to stay independent contractors right okay okay <laughs> how, how do we give up the right when we're in a union yeah well but i don't think it's the the, the typical union that we're talking about it's like a more like a driver's union than a, you know, the actual union with high dues and strikes and things like that. But right, at least you're getting something for what you're paying. And now, well, and they're they're changing the due structure, so now they're going to take you take a thirteen cents a ride from you okay. instead of thirty five bucks a month. And the amount of rides I do that works out less than thirty five bucks a month. Oh, you're even going to get a break there. Okay, 
Have you? I can do more if I want. I might, yeah. you know, to help so, the union out. So I know we've spoken in the past and I've looked at your numbers, right? So on a typical week, you say you want to do 10, 12 trips a day, right? Right. And then you just leave in the morning, do your thing for four, five, five, six hours, whatever it's going to take you. And then you just come back home and enjoy the rest of the day, right? Yeah. Seven to 10 rides is 100 to 160 bucks. <laughs> in LA, seven to ten rides would be like thirty bucks. <laughs> but anyway, um, that's so, what it is in Portland. <laughs> yeah, I, I know exactly. Next door neighbors are not that happy either. But that's why they come poach in your area, though. Right. Um, I, I want to also talk a little bit about, um, you know, you, as a veteran driver, right? Would I, I know the other thing that there is, by the way, that you guys know that you have an inflation adjustment every year on your rate, right? Because every year, like you, you, it wasn't 127 up until January 2023. You guys got a bump from like, I think, 115 to 127. And if inflation okay. is bad, you're going to get better. Like you're going to get the bump to 135 probably next year. So you, well, that's good. Yeah, you have that too. So to me, a lot of drivers, perfectly honest with you, don't look at it as deeply as we do because we're in the business, right? What is your complaint? If you have any complaints, do you have any complaints? Too many games. Still, you guys complaining about games? I thought we had the games. Well, they don't. They don't. I no. I don't. I don't care if I have the games now. Okay. I play them because they throw it, throw them out, and it's a little extra money on top of the money. But if I'd rather get higher pay and no games, like you yeah. said. I yeah, I agree with you. Um, so. Besides that, do you have any other complaints? Like, do you do? You, I mean, you're making plenty of money, right? I, I'm assuming you are because I know, uh, like, that's yeah. we talked about two weeks ago. Like, we looked at your ride count and we looked at your earnings and things like that. So, I've checked these numbers. I can verify these numbers. So, so he um, was online for close to 39 hours two weeks ago. He he provided 65 trips, and his active hours were about 22. And he grossed, grossed, I'm not going to say make, because a lot of people are under misconception that they made that money. No, that money hit your bank account, but you put money to get that money back in your bank account in expenses. So he grossed $900, including tips, okay, in 22 active hours, which is above $40 an active hour. And on online hours, he grossed uh, about $22, $23 an hour, right? So a lot of people are going to say, ah, see, look, you're sitting half the time. What do you say to that? Uh, I'd be sitting at home if I wasn't sitting in my car. So that's are all I have sitting, to say. Are you sitting that low much because there are no trips? Is that why? Or are you, you're you you not declining trips, right? Well, no. If I can go, typically I can go 70 to 80 miles before I have to charge again. Okay. And that charge takes me an hour to go okay. from 30% up to 90%. That gives me about 70, 80 miles. And then okay. I go use it up. Okay. So with the area preference, I can actually get the best I've got is about 11 rides in that time span. I got you. So so the, the, the amount of time you're online also includes your charging type, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and I have nothing else to do but, you know, read or whatever yeah so um i mean you know i appreciate obviously you speaking to me and i mean um, our our idea is that the washington state model could be and should be duplicated in all other cities what do you what do you think about that do you think we have no i agree Ed. i don't know i don't know why minnesota dropped the ball but or why that yeah governor it, yeah and how how do you think how do you think if you were to give any advice to drivers, right? Because the driver community is, is you know, pretty, uh, they don't have a voice, right? Even if they do have a voice, they don't even understand what's going on, right? How do you think we should, as drivers, we should be more involved in legislation, in like specifically in your case, when these changes were coming around, what did you do? Did you go support your driver community? I, well, Seattle started about a year ago now or a little more than a year ago and then we just got it in in vancouver starting of january this starting right. to 2023 right so i didn't really do anything other than i saw these numbers coming out for workman's comp out of my rides and i was right. curious what that was and that led me to ask questions yeah. 
And I found the union that way. And of course I joined when I found out all the benefits yeah. and I was very, very grateful for the higher rates. Yeah. I mean, you're retired, you're doing this as a side hustle, but you know, eight, 900 bucks a week is no chump change. Yeah. Yeah. And I, in the old days I, I do 1800 bucks a week, but you know, that's so how, when how I, are you able to, how are you able to accomplish that more hours or the pay was better? How was, or the, the pay was better. And they had, they had the uh, ride challenge bonuses. Okay. And I was always on top of that because I can I could rig up my driving to shorties like you call them right in downtown Portland, and I had a couple hot spots where I could just go pick up people and drive a few blocks back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay. And so I could hit the ride challenges, no problem. Yeah. So they got rid of all the quests and all the bonuses and ride challenges, but they gave you the better rates. Right, and they changed the surge. When I was started out driving, the surge was uh, it grew. Yeah. So the longer you were in a surge area, yeah. it multiplied. I mean, I can remember a surge that I pulled into started at 11 and I pulled out of it, got a ride at 45. Right. So, so it's not <laughs> yeah. then, then it's not as happy as you, you put it out there because you were making more money in the same hours before. Now you're making half the money. So how's that? A, because you have the highest was, rates, right? Back then I was doing 20 to 30 rides a day uh, okay. and driving, driving and well, pushing the 12 hours a day. Yeah. You know, now I'm driving six, seven hours a day and doing 160. So I'm, you know, I'm doing okay. I'm, I'm you know, I'm happy with that okay. right now. I, I don't have to drive. I'm a morning driver. I start at three in the morning, you know, get airport rides, people going to work. I'm a morning driver. And because I did all that nighttime driving, and that's tough. That nighttime driving is tough when you're picking up people at the bars and they're argumentative and, I never had anybody that was sick or anything. Two. In 24,000 rides, I had two pukers. <laughs> 24,000. That's a lot of trips. So um, in closing, you know, uh, I mean, you know, I, I think I think what you guys have up there, under the circumstances and where the country is at compared to you guys, is fantastic, right? Look, we know these companies are not going to come to the table unless there is some legislation happening. And when it does happen, they cry saying that, oh, you're going to lose your flexibility. Have you lost your flexibility? Okay. No. Yeah. Have you, have you like, you're working less, that's why you're making less money, but it's pleasurable hours, charging your yeah. car, watching some YouTube in the car, whatever you do. Yeah, I'm not out killing myself like I did when I started in 2017. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, with leisure, you're making your 800 to 1,000 bucks a week. You're grossing 800,000. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. And, and, do you think you would be able to do that without all this involvement of legislation and driver unions and the companies coming together? I don't think it would have happened. No, if I had upfront fares, had an ice car, there's no way I'd be doing this. Yeah, yeah, I, I believe you. Yeah. Um, so in closing, if you have any advice to the rest of the country, <laughs> you know, the floor is yours. Give us whatever you want to get anything off your chest. There's something you don't like, you know, tell tell the audience all about it. Uh, I would just suggest keep watching the show me the money club and follow Sergio and Chris's advice. And they're really working on your behalf. All right. Well, thank you for the plug, man. But you know, we're really trying to do our best, but trust me, all of us are jealous. Uh -oh. <laughs> we're all jealous. And uh, you know, if we can, if I can come poach just for one day, <laughs> drive in Seattle to get that buck 50 and 64 cents, I will raise my acceptance rate through the roof. I'll get it to hundred percent. Yeah. You know what That's mean? the other thing. They, you know, when I found out I could do that, I, well, I never had any problems with acceptance rate anyways, but then it, it helped more to know I was getting paid more. Well, I yeah. wanted to be out there. Well, you're profitable. That's the point, right? We're all doing it for right. money. We're not doing it for, you know, charity. You're profitable. No. You're ex extremely profitable at those rates, right? All right. right, Craig, you know, I, I truly appreciate it. So you're the second sure. or third uh, Washington State driver I've spoken to. All three of you have the same said the same thing. You know, <laughs> yes, there is more drivers out there, but the demand has not collapsed. And we're still busy. We're still working. And, and even if poachers come in, you're still getting your trips, right? And I so when these companies come and say to me next time, oh, world's going to come to an end. Everybody's going to lose their flexibility. I'm going to go, look, go talk to Craig. <laughs> 
I'll just point them out to you. I would I would just challenge those companies to pull out of someplace and watch the repercussions because the, the riders are going to get pissed. I agree. I agree. So, again, thank you, man. Um, much appreciated. We're obviously going to keep in touch. You know, be safe sure. out there, all right? Okay. 